We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. To the Shamba Shepap Safari. Donors care a lot about impact, mm -hmm. and given how much I deal with ICT applications in ag and how cool they are, mm -hmm. people tend to assume they're having the impact we want. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't know that until we measure it. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you know you're having impact and what impact is that? Okay, well we, we have a lot of focus on monitoring and evaluation because we need to know that what we're doing is working. As soon as we don't have people learning or watching the program, we're obviously doing something wrong and we need to change or give up and go home. So we have four ways of measuring impact. The first is quarterly advertising research foundation data on um, who's watching the program, you know, who's watching at what time, which broadcaster, which station, what are they male or female, what is their age, what is their LSM status, where are they in the country. So we get that data every quarter from the broadcaster and it's generated by Ipsos Innovate in East Africa. The second way is through the knowledge, attitude and practice surveys we do. So before we go on air each year and after we go on air, we interview a thousand people um, with general questions, you know, do you watch Shamba Shape Up? Did you learn anything? What did you learn? Did you do anything? What did you do? And, and then specific broken down by topic. So do you vaccinate your cow against East Coast fever? And then we can mm. compare the answers pre and post broadcast and see if there's been a learn, learning um, increase in knowledge mm -hmm. or a change in attitude or a change in practice between people who don't watch the program and people who do watch the program. So we can track, track those changes. Um, so that tells us that we've got about a 90% increase in learning every year. So 90% of people saying they learn something new and about 40 to 45% who are adopting something that they learnt and applying it to their farm. And over 90% of people who adopt say it increased the amount of food for their household or the income for their household. And then we ask them, what do you think of Shamba Shape Up? And we're still getting a 95% rate of good or very good and very trusting, trustworthy. So that's great. The third way we do um, M&E is through our SMS service. So people SMS us every weekend for more information. And we can, with the database we have, we can aggregate, disaggregate the messages, male, female, where do they come from, we can map them, we can track the messages that come in, so we know which episodes are extremely popular, which are not, mm -hmm. um, what the topics are, so we know that women are more likely to ask questions about um, jikos, stoves, chickens, and water harvesting and solar lights, and men are more likely to ask questions about cows and maize, which is great. Um, and then we can ask them, you know, did you get a leaflet that we sent you? Because a lot of them get stolen in the post. Really? Yeah. Um, Those maize leaflets. <laughs> <laughs> very popular thing. Um, so, yeah, we asked them, did you get a leaflet? Was it useful? You know, that kind of thing. And then the fourth way is external studies. So we really like external studies. That's what donors yeah. love, too. Yeah. So, because the, the knowledge attitude and practice surveys are... This, the actual survey is done by an mm. external company and then we just get given mm -hmm. the data. So we, have, we just tell them, this is what we need, we need to know, and they go out and get, do the surveys and send us the, mm. the figures. The, ex, the completely external surveys, so one was done last year by Reading University, mm -hmm. Bargainigan, um, USIU, and CDI, I think. And that was funded by the African Enterprise Challenge Fund, who funded our pilot series uh -huh. to find out what is the value of the changes made by people who watch Shamba Shape Up. So they, they looked at our content, they looked at our, our annual CAP surveys and they decided that they were going to focus on dairy because it's much easier to measure changes in dairy. Um, and they came out with 428,000 households who benefited from Shamba Shape Up in Kenya through increased food or income as a result of changing something they learnt on the show. 
And in dairy alone, there was a $24 million increase in the net value of milk produced mm -hmm. in Kenya. So those are really useful numbers. But what we particularly liked about that research was the qualitative side. The participatory budgets, the qualitative focus group discussions, which told us people who watch the show are more confident to go and get more information from other sources. They feel stimulated to access more information and they also feel more confident as a farmer in themselves. So they're more likely to make a change because they feel that they've, they're in part of the Shamba Sheba community, which we think is great. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, you told me that you're a farmer. Mm -hmm. a, a media group company is not known for agricultural knowledge. Where are you getting this content mm -hmm. other than your own expertise? And how do you know it's trustable? Mm -hmm. How do you know you're giving them uh, good content, up-to-date content? That's a good question. So um, David, our, our, my boss, um, the executive director, he, his background, he spent 35 years in Kenya doing um, mainly agricultural media education. So he has a background in, in agriculture. I have a background in agriculture, but we also have um, agricultural content specialists who sit mainly now in the mobile information service office, mm -hmm. but we also uh, work with our partners, so we never cover anything that's faddy or, or brand new. We cover things that are very basic, so spacing planting at maize, at maize planting, mm -hmm. spacing seeds. Um, vaccinating chickens for known diseases with known vaccines. We, we stick to the proven, practical, and easy to implement practices that people should do to improve their farming that are not being done. Um, so we're not trying to get people to buy a petrol-driven maize shelling drying machine. We're trying to get people to dry their maize off of the ground and not on the dirt. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's simple stuff. It's nothing too complicated. And what we do is when we when we have finished filming and editing, we then send the clips to our partners to review and make sure that our content is spot on. Mm -hmm. Most countries have ministries of agriculture mm -hmm. that have extension services that are trying to help farmers improve their productivity, just what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, uh, some of these extension services, want to use ICT. I only have one or two examples of ministries that seem to be doing that seriously. Um, and I don't have many examples at all of ICT providers that have, much, have had much luck mm -hmm. working with them. Have you had any luck? And if not, if yes, what, what's your, any tips for others? And if not, what's been, what, what do you think is in the way? So for us, we have, um, we have an MOU with, uh, with CARI, which is now CALRO, the Agricultural Livestock Research Organization in Kenya, to use their staff on the program mm -hmm. as experts where they get to feature their staff and their content for free. We don't charge them for that because that's their service. Um, and then we, get, we obviously get excellent content. We also work with their extension workers on the ground to find farmers because they're usually the ones who know where uh -huh. all the farmers are. The biggest challenge is a lack of resources. So if we want to use um, an extension officer they usually have this very convoluted, complicated cost structure where they want you to pay for them, for their time, for their driver's time and for the vehicle, which, obviously, which usually is, is outside of our budget because they can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. The second thing is the lack of um, human resources. So, I mean, in Western Kenya, your average per county is one extension officer for 2,500 farmers. And the farmer just can't, uh, an extension officer, just, he just can't do his job or her job effectively with that spread. So they end up sort of either sitting in their office all the time, doing everything on the phone, mm -hmm. or visiting a set group of farmers and not, not hitting the others. So for us, that's been quite difficult. Um, but what we do know, there are two things we know is happening. The agriculture universities are using Shamba Shape Up in their lectures to train future um, agronomists oh, and extension officers. Incredible. But uh, that said, there are no extension officers in Kenya under the age of 45. So there's, there are no young extension officers coming up through the ranks that know how, the, how ICTs work mm -hmm. and, and they want to use them. So 
that's a problem um, because they have this old mindset of you come in with a camera it's not good you know it's, it can be quite scary and they don't they're nervous and that's the mindset from the 80s and 90s in Kenya uh -huh. um, but we have just written a report um, for the World Bank advocating the use of um, mobile ICT technology so smartphones or tablets where extension officers can go and register farmers in their area um, onto their smartphone with their phone numbers and then every week they can send them messages tailored to their location so those would be written by a central content mm. management knowledge management system where you know the, the world agroforestry centers and that, that kind mm -hmm. of people in the world would then would put that content in there it would be written by content experts to fit the, the local context mm -hmm. and then it would get sent to the extension workers and they would be able to pick what is relevant for their area and then send it on to the farmers mm -hmm. and there'd have to be an incentivization for the number of farmers they sign up but that would be a way for the extension workers to overcome this lack of time mm -hmm. um, and lack of money to get around and that's something that the Kenyan government seems to be very interested in Mm -hmm. which would be good to see if it actually works and then with the advent of smartphones in Kenya get people to get to extension offices to show the farmers clips from uh -huh. Sham Shape Up or other videos um, on a smartphone or a tablet.